Our New Testament lesson comes from the 12th chapter in the book of Romans, verses 9 through 21. Let's once more lean in and listen to these words, perhaps with a fresh set of ears. Paul writes, Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Pursue hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God continue to add God's blessing onto this, the reading and hearing of God's holy word. Let us pray. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the light and reveal. Come as the fire and burn. Convict us. Convert us consecrate us until we are wholly thine. And now, O Lord, my prayer is simply this, that the the words of my mouth and the, the words of all our hearts, that these words will be found pleasing and acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In 1990, Bette Midler released an album entitled Some People's Lives. The seventh track on the album was the cover of Julie Gold's song, From a Distance. Midler released the song amid global conflicts like the Rwandan Civil War, Iraq's invasion of Kuwait, the ecological disaster of the Exxon Valdez oil spill, and the deadly HIV-AIDS epidemic. And into this cacophony of the world's fears, Midler's from a distance reminded listeners that God was not distant from the creation. Rather, God was invested in the creation. The song's refrain spoke into this litany of the world's catastrophic events. God is watching us. God is watching us. God is watching us from a distance. Listeners were encouraged by the notion that God sees even if from afar. One might recognize this watching from the distance God from this morning's Exodus text. Today's reading from Exodus 3, often referred to as Moses' call story, signals a a, a turning point in Moses' life. And while Exodus 3 is important, its value becomes significant when we recall its context. If we zoom out on the picture... We remember the Israelites are in Egypt after having sold themselves into Egyptian slavery for grain during a famine. 
And as Exodus opens, the Israelite hero Joseph dies and a new king arose, we're told, over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And this new pharaoh fears the fruitful and prolific Israelites that they will overtake the Egyptians. And so he encourages his people to deal harshly with the Israelites and ruthless taskmasters oppress the Israelites. And eventually this new pharaoh initiates a genocidal program which calls for the death of Israelite boys at birth. And into this fray, an Israelite boy named Moses, life is spared, and he helps lead the people away from oppressive Egypt. And now, in Exodus 3, adult Moses is shepherding his father-in-law's sheep, and he has a theophany. Theos, God, phania, manifestation to show. A a theophany then is a manifestation of the deity. And so there alone in a field, Moses sits probably pondering the world and life in general. And then he is visited by God. And according to the writers of Exodus 3, 7 through 10, the Lord explains to Moses that as a result of observing the misery of the Israelites, this God will deliver them from the Egyptians and relocate them into a better place. And as the story goes, Moses miraculously leads the Israelites out of Egypt and they enter the promised land and eventually establish themselves as a vibrant monarchy. Then the Lord said, Exodus 3, 7 and 8, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. The Hebrew found there in Exodus 3-7 is a verb in a form which signifies intensity, emphasis, a certainty of verbal action. The, The phrase may be translated then as my really seeing or my observing. A few other biblical translations get at this when they translate the phrase, I have indeed seen. I have marked well, I've clearly seen. And from this, we can surmise God is not caught off guard. God is not startled by the Israelites' condition living under Pharaoh's oppression. Rather, God has been paying attention. Even if God's engagement has been beyond the Israelites' perception, God has been watching. You know, I wonder how might our interaction with the world change if we, like Moses, began to live in ways which saw God as close enough to observe and act, yet somehow far enough to remain out of reach. And what if we believed this God is the one who is calling us to join in the justice work toward healing and wholeness. If we knew God was observing, how might we change? And how might that change how we interact locally, nationally, internationally? Would we use our resources differently if we believed God was watching us? Would we use our time differently? Would we use our words differently? Would our prayers change if we believed that God was watching us from a distance, yet still able to hear our cries and act on our behalf? How would we tend to see our response to God's call if we believe that God were asking us to join in the journey toward justice, healing, and wholeness? This 
is our theological task. Together and individually, we study about God in order to live into who it is God knows we can become. According to a classical definition, theology is fides quarens intellectum, faith seeking understanding. It is a faith which ventures to inquire, dares to ask questions. It is a willingness to engage in conversation with the divine. As we seek to understand who and where God is calling us to be the hands and feet of loving actions at work in the communities we find ourselves, whether those are local, national, or international. Faith is never to become a sedative for glossing over what is happening around us, nor is it a grab bag of, of cliche responses to the complex nature of life's deep questions. Instead, faith prompts us to ask questions, activates inquiry, resists the urge to accept things as they are, calls us to seek together with God and each other what our faithful response as God's people might look like. It's about finding the connection between our orthodoxy and our orthopraxy between what we believe and how we practice what we believe and how we live our lives. How do we proclaim what we believe by living what we believe? Now, perhaps this is where Paul's words to the Romans offer some guidance. In these verses from Romans 9 today, Paul is shifting the community's focus up to this point in Paul's argument, love has been something that only God or Christ has performed. Now Paul is shifting toward the redeemed vision of humanity. The ways in which Jesus' followers will live in response to God's grace. Genuine, unpretentious love is to become the standard by which the community acts and enacts their reasonable worship, their renewed thinking as they discern what is the good and acceptable and perfect response to God's call upon their lives. We recall those words from last week's text, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by a renewing of the mind. Paul is offering the community a, a theological scaffolding as they live out the result of their theological work in real time. Their fides quarens intellectum, their faith seeking understanding, a faith which is evidenced in their practicing genuine love, hating what is evil, holding fast to what is good, loving one another with mutual affection, outdoing one another in showing honor, being enthusiastic enthusiastic in spirit and serving the Lord. They are beginning to understand the reality of faith. Together, we care for each other while extending that same care and hospitality to the people around us. The church is never to become an exclusive club. The church is to be a welcoming community. French Jesuit priest, philosopher, and theologian Pierre Tillard de Chardin captures this poetically when he writes, God awaits us every instant in our action, in the work of the moment. There is a sense in which God is at the tip of my pen and my brush, of my very heart and of my thought. To live then as the hands and feet of God at work in this world is to recognize we encounter the risen Christ, as Deschardins puts it, when we write and when we paint. It is to understand that wherever we are, whatever we are doing, we are called to be the hands and feet of God at work in this world as we bear witness to the love of Christ at work in this world. This communion table 
is a tangible reminder of God's grace at work in our lives and our grateful response which prompts us to take this same attitude into the places beyond this worship time. To paraphrase Roman Catholic theologian William Cavanaugh, we are the wafer at work in the world. As Christ's body, we gather around Christ's body to remember God's first incarnate love, Christ's body, so that we are enabled to become God's ever-inviting incarnate love at work in this world. In the music video for From a Distance, there's a point in the song where Bette Midler sings, God is watching us from a distance. And she looks up toward the skies, she smiles, and she waves. It is as if in that moment she recognizes God in the distance. And then she sings, from a distance there is harmony. And it echoes through the land. And it's the hope of hopes. It's the love of loves. It's in the heart of every human. On this weekend, when we pause to remember the gift of work and the contribution of workers, we recall the church's work is to be a people who bear witness to God's love at work in this world, wherever we may be. This is the church's call to be a people who engage in faithful conversations, to discern where and how God is leading us to be those hands and feet at work in this world by sharing and showing Christ's love. A parent was reading the Sunday paper as their young child kept tugging at their sleeve to, to come down on the floor and play with me. This parent kept indicating, one more minute, just, just one more minute, let me finish the paper and then we'll play. The child was persistent. And so this parent, having an idea to, to buy more time to read the paper, took one of the pages of that paper and, and ripped it up into many pieces, handed it to the child and said, put that back together and when it's done, then I'll play with you. Within five minutes, this child was tugging at their sleeve, said, I'm done, let's play. With skepticism, which quickly turned to astonishment. This parent looked to the floor and could not believe what they saw. The paper was back together in perfect alignment. How did you do that so fast? This parent asked. Oh, it was easy, the child said. On the back of the page was a picture of the world. And when I put the world back together, the rest fell into place. Let love be genuine. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Pursue hospitality to the strangers. And the world will fall into place. To God be the glory, now and forevermore, world without end. Hallelujah and amen. Once again, we recall the many gifts of God into our lives and we give back to God with gratitude. We invite our ushers forward for the giving and receiving of our tithes and our offerings, our time, our talents, our treasures. And we ask if you've not already done so, please sign the fellowship pads. Let us know of your presence with us this day. We give to God with glad and grateful hearts.